Hi, welcome back to BRMC's Healthy Connections. I'm your host today, Donna McMullen. Here with us as our guest is Deb Way. She's the Acute Inpatient Rehab Program Director. That's correct. Yay, got it. At BRMC. So, Deb, welcome. We're Thank so you. glad you're here. And we were talking during the break, and, and you were mentioning that uh, the Acute Inpatient Rehab is the only rehab in a 75-mile radius? That's correct. Wow. That's correct. Wow. And we serve about a 250-mile radius. That's our marketing and the catchment area that we, we deal with. Um, a lot of confusion nowadays with all of the wonderful subacutes that have started up in our um, skilled nursing homes mm -hmm. where they're providing that level of service uh, when you no longer need to be in an acute setting. Mm -hmm. And so I, I hear a lot of times, well, you're just like so-and-so. And it's like, uh, no. No? I'm not. Well, tell us about the difference. What, well, what's the difference? Well, the difference is with acute inpatient rehab, we do 24-7 RN. Okay. And we have a doctor available 24-7. Mm -hmm. We do three hours of therapy five out of seven days. Wow. But you're still treated on the other days, too. We just may not do the full three hours. Um, we do family training. We do home evaluations if it's needed. So say you were going home and, mm -hmm. and you didn't know if you could get through the bathroom door with your walker, eh, we go with you. Okay, and you assess the situation, That's find right. out what needs to be mm -hmm. done, um, what makes the home safe That's for, that, right. for that patient, um, what the family right. member needs to do as far as helping transfer a person, mm -hmm. getting them in or out of bed. Or building a ramp if we mm -hmm. need one. Sometimes they're just for the short term. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it might need to be one that's going to be there for a while. Okay. So, And we work with churches, too, sometimes, because it's the church families that help a lot of our elderly. Sure. They're always there. Oh, they what, are. what a giving community. It is. I know every time we're on the air, I always thank the community for their <laughs> generosity in so, oh so many ways. Oh, I know. I whether know. it's donating food, whether it's donating time, whether it's donating money, we are so fortunate to live in we this area. Are. We're truly mm -hmm. blessed. What would be a criteria to bring a patient to your floor? Well, you would need to have one of the qualifying diagnoses that Medicare gives us, which would be like a stroke, okay. a spinal cord injury, a brain injury, mm -hmm. um, like from a car wreck or being hit in the head, uh, Parkinson's, um, Gillian Barre could come, some of the neurological disorders, mm -hmm. hip fractures. Does it have to be referred by a physician? Yes, uh, but I will tell you that lots of times I have family referrals, and I just simply ask them, please contact the physician, get an order written, and I'll do the rest. Okay. The, you are dealing in miracles, I think, each and oh, every yes. day. Yes, Up, up on the in, inpatient, acute inpatient rehab. Um, and what I mean by that is my understanding is that Sometimes the patients that you see, the rest of the medical community, I don't want to say they've completely given up on them, but they've run the course or the, the logical mm -hmm. gamut sometimes, mm -hmm. and that's when they come to you. So that's very tell true. us about your successes and what you do to make those miracles <laughs> happen up there. We had a young man not long ago that um, had gotten hit over the head, and had to be um, a, a lift, airlifted to St. John's, and they had to open his skull to drain out some of the fluid. And during the course of this, he also had a stroke. Oh, my goodness. He's a very young man. And once he was medically stable, they sent him to us. And bless his heart, he was like a baby in terms of balance. Mm -hmm. You know, it was just like a little weevilo. Mm -hmm. And this gentleman stayed with us for about 28 days, and he went from having to be constantly supervised to being modified independent and able to get up and go to the restroom by himself to do all of these things. Language came back. The cognition cleared. The balance cleared. This gentleman has gone home come back to BRMC outpatient, and oh he always plans a few minutes early, and he comes back up on the floor, and you watch him walk down the hall, and you're thinking, wow, yeah, wow. Because your therapy that you're talking about, oh, the three hours of therapy, that's 
That's occupational, physical, and speech. Okay. And they're real intense. We write very specialized plans for every patient. So it's not, you know, it's not a book we pull out of. Mm -hmm. We evaluate mm -hmm. you. We see where the weaknesses are and we see where the strengths are. And we write a plan that will help you start developing that skill set again. Sure. We do a lot of compensation, teach compensatory techniques, um, do anything you want to do, but you may not do it the way you used to. Okay. That would come under, for instance, like with occupational therapy, if I understand it correctly as a layman, as a layperson, that this is something, for instance, um, this would be how to make your own breakfast in a right. kitchen. And right. you, you have all of that up there oh, in yes. your unit, don't yes, you? Yes, we have a lovely yeah. kitchen. Mm -hmm. We have a washer and dryer. Right. Yeah. And well, lots those of are the day-to-day -day things, <laughs> too, are. that people okay. need to know how to, to right. do safely right. so they don't re-injure themselves, mm -hmm. have another fall, mm -hmm. have to start back from square one. That's true. When I was a treating therapist on the floor, as they got better and better, I would have them make their bed. Sure. You know, strip and make their own bed, gather their own linens, do all the things that you do when you're at home. And um, we did a lot of cooking groups, we still do. We try to challenge the individual for the level of independence that they're going to need in order to go home. Because mm -hmm. our goal always is to send our patients home. Back home. Yes. Back home. Yes. So that they're safe but that they absolutely can function mm -hmm. within whatever mm -hmm. skill sets they, they have been able to master right. going with right. you. So, what is this you've got? Well, <laughs> I, like, I like to keep the public up on what we're, we have to offer. Okay. This is the BioNest system for, for use on the upper extremity. Okay. This would have electrodes in here and underneath here. We would hook this into like a little Palm Pilot Right. And it would have all my pertinent information in it. And say I had a flaccid hand from a stroke. Mm -hmm. It means it wouldn't move. Mm -hmm. It was just like a dish rag. Okay. okay. We can start our electrodes. And this is called neuromuscular re-education. We can start this and we can actually strum your fingers. Oh, my. The, you can actually key it to do the block test where you pick up a block. It's called it'll close and open. And you can have this on and engage in another activity even. But this system is used to re-educate mm -hmm. the, the, the muscles and the nerves, re-educate, because whatever we trigger it to do, it's going to go back up and be recorded. I was going to say, you're re-educating the brain as well, mm -hmm. okay, through all of this, saying, hey, this is what we That's used right. to do. <laughs> yeah. Remember yeah. this? Yeah. This is what we used to do. And we can still can. Yeah. And, and we do this, and, and you might have this on starting off. You might start off at 10 minutes and graduate up to a 30-minute cycle. But then the beauty of this is after you've done that and you take it off the patient, then you engage them immediately in the task. Oh, so okay. we can see how much carryover we're getting. Okay. Because lots of times we can use this, and you may use it for a week. You may use it two weeks. And then all at once one day, bam, you got it. Oh my goodness! That, some of the okay. some of the movement is coming back. It's more fluid, so and it's it allows be very freedom. individualized. Mm -hmm. Each it person's is. going to be different. It is okay. truly it is, because you when you first start this, you have to continue to turn the current up until you find out where the individual goes. No, that's it. Stop it. Oh. Take it off. <laughs> you know, because sure you, you, you got to know what their, what their threshold yeah. is. Yeah. So, you know, when, of course, I don't have an injury, but when they put it on me and they will get about six, it's like, whoa, stop. Yeah. At that, after that point becomes somewhat painful. It, yeah. It, I won't just, be, I can't function. It, yeah. it, it's just nothing but like painful. Mm -hmm. But when these, when we use these, we use these on strokes. You can use this on a spinal cord individual hmm. who may have some shoulder movement. You can use this on the on the forearm and hand. Um, matter of fact, the first time that I saw this used, it was with a gentleman who had broken um, his spinal cord at I think C five six, and he picked up a glass bottle and poured it into a glass and then pick the glass up and drink it. And shouldn't be able to do anything like that with yeah. a spinal cord injury. Totally, yeah. 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 And yeah. He had some shoulder movement, but this just kind of allows them to um, regain 
Okay. Some independence. Does an individual, does a patient actually take equipment like that home with them? No, we use this on the unit and okay. then outpatient. If right. Our outpatient department also has these. Okay. So you might continue down there with it. Um, in the event that you needed this, some insurance companies will pay, some pay a portion. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's very individualized on how they do this, but based on how, what the physician writes, how the order is stated, some people, like the spinal cord individual, would keep this. For someone who's had a stroke mm -hmm. and we've gone through the intense therapy, odds are they won't need this. They'll, they will have already developed okay. the, the and skills. And they'll retain, they will retain what those skills yes, are. Yes, they okay. will. All right. Deb, I know you've got some more things oh, for yeah. us. We're going to take a little break. We'll All be right. right back. Don't go away. We want to learn more about this. The technology that's out there is amazing, fascinating. Pick a word. It's just <laughs> remarkable. We'll be right back. We'll just take a short break, and we'll learn more about the acute inpatient rehab at BRMC. Oh, God. 